Getting back to the story that dominated the conversation on Capitol Hill this week, I want to turn to Republican Congressman Mike Kelly of Pennsylvania. He's a member of the House Ways and Means Committee, one of the two committees responsible for moving this Obamacare replacement bill through the House. Congressman Kelly, I know you've had a long day. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks, Nancy. It's great to be on Red and Blue. But I'm from the private sector. There's no such thing as a long day. You just keep working uh, until your work's done. So that's what we have to do, and that's what we're going to do. We promised to do some things, and we're actually working to do them right now. Well, let's see if you're that cheerful once the committee has worked <laughs> through the night. But regardless, uh, that, that's a great attitude. Um, I want to ask you about uh, these very important groups that came out against your plan in the past 24 hours. You've got the AARP, you've got the American Medical Association, you've got all the major hospital associations all saying that they cannot support this bill because it is going to lead to anywhere between six and 15 million Americans, depending on which analysis you look at, uh, from getting health insurance. Does that concern you? Well, sure, it concerns me, but I want to get to the actual facts of it. You know, we haven't been able to do the actual scoring on the bill yet, so we're waiting to see that. But you know what? This is only phase one, Nancy. We have to go through this. We have to make sure we're repealing all those taxes. This is Obamacare gone, and that's what we were trying to do. When you are able to return $1 trillion in taxes and to put in taxpayers' pockets, my goodness, what can they do with that? The other thing is the crush that it's had on businesses. When you allow businesses, again, to have a future in front of them that they can actually plan for and don't hold them down. The last time I looked, the the only people paying taxes are people who are working. They pay wage taxes. That supports Social Security. That supports Medicare. And the revenue from profitable businesses is what drives our country, what provides all that capital that we need. So I understand my friend's concerns. I get that. But I would just say this. Look, this is a plan that we put out there. The speaker has been very clear that this is what we're going to do. We're trying to get there. The president is on board with us. And you know, at the end of the day, you either vote for this plan or you vote with Nancy Pelosi. I don't think that's a great idea. But what's your response to Democratic criticism that, sure, you are giving tax breaks to wealthy people who don't necessarily need those breaks, while at the same time, you're less generous to the people who really need that assistance to help them buy insurance? No, but, that, but that's not true. And it's always going to be the case. It's always uh, it's the rich that get all the breaks. But here's the reality of this is when you look at some of these programs, when we return to the states, their ability to decide where the money is going, we'll backpack that to them, let them make those decisions. But more importantly than anything else, hardworking American taxpayers, especially, especially middle income and lower income people, are going to get a tax credit that they can use to buy the policy that they want, not one that somebody from Washington says, this is what you must buy. How about allowing people to buy what they can actually afford? what contains the policy pieces that they would like to have in there. Isn't that what it's always supposed to be about? The private sector, allowing people to compete, allowing insurance companies to go head to head for people's business, that drives the price down and the quality up. That's just a basic tenet of economics. One of the, uh, let's talk about those tax credits because you brought them up. One of the key criticisms that has uh, come from some of these medical groups is that the way you formulated the tax credits, it's basically a flat credit. The same amount goes to everyone, uh, whether they make $30,000 a year or $70,000 a year. And they say uh, that those tax credits would be more useful if they were targeted, if they were, uh, you know, gradated so that lower income people got more. Is that something that you would be willing to consider? Yeah, I'm willing to consider anything at this point, but I do think this. When you base it on people's age and the size of their families, that's when you're really looking at people, middle income and lower income people. We've got to help them with their premiums. Listen, I'm in the private sector. I do provide health care for the people that I work with every day. But when you see premiums skyrocketing, when you see co-pays and deductibles skyrocketing, there's a lot of people with an insurance policy right now, but it's all still going to be out of pocket until they reach those certain levels. So we've really got to turn the corner on that. We're going to make it consumer consumer choices. They make the choice. The person who's actually paying for the, the health care is going to make the choice. We're going to help them with some tax credits. I get that part. And I know some of my friends don't like that idea. But you know, the other side of the coin is, listen, after seven plus years of Obamacare, there's nobody out there that's saying, I think this still has a chance. Even the friends that I'm with right now on both sides of the aisle are starting to talk about things that never should have been passed in the Affordable Care Act. And they're on our side saying, listen, we have to get rid of these things. So I think as we go forward, you're going to see more people getting on board and understanding it. And I understand sometimes you go so far down that road, you can't come back. But when my friend Mick Mulvaney, who's as conservative a guy as you can find, is working with the president right now and says this is a plan that can work, this is a plan that fulfills those promises, I'm okay with that. 
One last question. You're, you know, you're a, a big proponent of fiscal restraint. And the other day you said, uh, we're going to find, we're going to find out what's in this bill before we pass it. We're not going to do what the Democrats did. However, your committee uh, wants to take a vote within the next 24 hours on this bill, and you don't know how much it's going to cost, and you don't know how it's going to be paid for. As a proponent of fiscal responsibility, how can you make up your mind on a bill like that when you don't know this basic information? Well, it's being scored right now, and as you know, it still has to go through the Rules Committee, and if it doesn't match up with what we're proposing, it won't be able to go forward. But you know what? On the Affordable Care Act, there wasn't a score on that beforehand either because almost every promise that was made has been broken, and we're just talking about things that are practical. We're putting it out today. People are getting a chance to look at it. In fact, the American people from 6 o'clock Monday night had a chance to look at this bill. Our piece is only, I think, 54 pages as opposed to almost 2,000. So what should be easier to understand? Going forward, yes, I am fiscally responsible. But I also am going to say the process is what we're championing today. Phase one is what we're going through right now. Phase two will be Dr. Price uh, as he looks through the rules. And phase three will be when we look at things like purchasing across state lines, uh, ab about all those different things that are important. As far as holding the cost down, tort reform, those things still have to come into play. Are they scored yet? No, but they will be scored. And if they don't score the right way, it won't come out. That's just that simple. Republican Congressman Mike Kelly of Pennsylvania, thanks so much. We really appreciate the time. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you so much.